The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you, everyone, for taking time to join us uh, today. My name is Stephen Aquario from the New York State Association of Counties, and welcome to today's uh, webinar on uh, small, local, diverse uh, business recovery initiatives post-COVID-19. Uh, we're very uh, pleased today uh, to have with us uh, Doug Rutnick, the founder uh, and head of sales uh, for VeraCloud. Uh, VeraCloud, a um, little bit of a little bit about a uh, little background about that uh, has come up with a program to assist with compliance uh, for voluntary and for mandated uh, diversity goals for state, for local governments, for pu public authorities, uh, and other levels of governmental entities that are seamlessly help to seamlessly identify, recruit, and more importantly, engage with the diverse uh, uh, sector of employers and local vendors, suppliers, subcontractors, for the inclusion in public and private contracting opportunities. Uh, Doug Rutnick uh, is a multi-sector expert with over two decades of experience with business and government. Uh, he's advised executive teams on driving growth through the public sector, uh, including navigating the state's, uh, the state government, its, its agencies, its authorities, its Empire State Development, uh, corporations, and certainly the minority and women-owned business enterprise rules and regulations, which can be complex. Doug has worked extensively with MWBE subcontractors to access contracting opportunities with state agencies and authorities, as well as with prime contractors uh, we're very pleased that uh, Doug uh, is with us here today and importantly to uh, provide this webinar, which, which should go about 30 minutes or so, in case you're wondering how long we'll be speaking today. Uh, throughout the uh, webinar, you can, uh, in the tab on your, win uh, on your screen or your uh, computer screen, there is a dashboard where you can type in questions. Uh, please type in questions throughout the presentation and we'll try to pick up those questions during the presentation or at the end. Please know that this program is being recorded and will be posted later this afternoon or early next week and will be posted on the NISAC website. But let me start by saying how grateful I am uh, that I have uh, known uh, Mr. Rutnick for many, many years and value his contribution uh, to government and in particular his assistance now um, during the, uh, uh, the pandemic, as we work through the pandemic and as we work through social unrest uh, and social justice issues, that we have a renewed focus on uh, MWBE or MBE. Of course, this is the executive law in the state of New York, uh, 15A, which requires 51%, at least a 51% ownership uh, operation uh, and controlled by uh, citizens or permanent resident aliens of Black, Hispanic, Asian Pacific, Asian Indian, or uh, American Indian, or Alaskan Native. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I started to look into this and research it, uh, the complexities of uh, MBWE certification, the complexities of uh, MBWE participation, it's complex. Uh, <laughs> participation in state and local procurement efforts, it's hard to keep your head above water to understand uh, how to run your business, uh, let alone um, try to get a little feedback uh, somewhere. I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I keep talking through it. But we, you know, it's hard to understand uh, where uh, the bids are, where to access government procurement, um, and to go on the Empire State Development website uh, to understand uh, the certification requirements for that. But there are opportunities that are, that are out there, and we have to do a better job at the state government level. We have to do a better job at the county and municipal level uh, and trying to engage, uh, encourage, uh, work with minority-owned businesses. We should have goals at least in our head to try to help uh, encourage 
the creation or the expansion of single owners to at least have one more employee? How can we work to uh, increase participation uh, for minority owned businesses so that they can bring an additional person, two, three, four, five onto the payroll to be successful? It's complex uh, to understand how to get certified. And so this presentation today uh, really helps to clarify, uh, helps, helps to use this one word, optimize. How can we optimize what we're doing already and look at procurement through a different lens? How can we try to uh, uh, enhance opportunities for minority-owned businesses right in our own county, right in our own town, right in our own city by using existing resources, the existing taxpayer expenditures that we require for services of the municipality or for uh, roads or for bridges or for other infrastructure related product uh, projects. And how can we try to engage suppliers, supply chains, prime contractors working with subcontractors and so on and so forth, trying to get down that level where we could try to encourage, enhance, and really do all that we can, uh, especially uh, during this post-COVID-19 uh, epicenter, the pandemic of this uh, epicenter being in the state of New York, so hard hit, so many people unemployed, uh, and, and in combination with the death of George Floyd, uh, and how can we uh, help do all that we can to encourage a greater participation in minority-owned businesses in the state of New York. So the state of New York has rules and regulations. The county offices have rules and regulations for certification. Some counties and cities have joint certification programs together. Some counties have community development offices. Other counties operate it differently. But today, we're going to learn how to optimize procurement. And, and with that said, that foundation laid, I'd like to turn it over to our guest speaker today, Mr. Doug Rutnick uh, from Vera Cloud. Uh, Doug? Steve, thank you. Thank you so much. That was a great introduction. Uh, I appreciate all the detail that you went into, too, on, on framing um, some of the most pressing issues for the counties and some of the uh, really most pressing issues for the personnel that are tasked with trying to um, do the best they can to facilitate these business relationships and, and incorporate diverse and local spending into county procurement. Um, Steve gave a lot of great background for me. I'm uh, really, really thankful for that. Um, I got into this, this, this space uh, as an offshoot of um, lobbying and government affairs work I had done for my father's firm where we had helped some of his larger clients understand the new MWBE rules and give them strategies to help make those business connections. Um, over time, I realized that there was a lot of inefficiency in this, and we uh, explored technologies. My startup company uh, created some new technologies for data mining, uh, for finding these vendors, and for connecting them. And as uh, the business evolved, we found that for government, a full service offering was, was by far um, much easier received in that, you know, we've become experts in how to communicate with vendors, how to connect with vendors, how to find vendors. And then, you know, one of the biggest pieces of that is, is how to um, enable counties to better utilize these vendors or, or municipalities. Uh, we've done a ton of work in the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, and I actually cut my teeth on this uh, in, in a state agency. The first pilot we did was with um, uh, the Albany Capital Center Authority uh, for the construction of the Albany Convention Center. So early on in our in our beginning as this company, we, we we started working, you know, helping them find diverse vendors for categories that uh, they came up empty with, like. Um, elevator installation and and we found there's not a lot of diverse elevator installers but there's a lot of diverse elevator inspectors there's also crane and rigging companies that can help hang the elevators um, you just have to approach the problem with with new eyes and and um, that's something that we can do so really just like to get started on the presentation um, if that's okay 
So <clears throat> I'll do, a, if we go back a slide, uh, a little bit more on, on who we are. We are, you know, a, a private company. Um, again, offices in office uh, in Albany, New York, and Boston, Massachusetts. Um, and the sole purpose of this company is to help entities, both public and private, better navigate uh, MWBE um, engagement. You know, where to find them, how to find them, contacting, uh, those sorts of things. Um, next slide. <clears throat> Why we believe we can help. Um, really the main reason we can help is because there are so many people in state government already tasked with responsibilities that end up getting this, this job of helping engage diverse vendors and increasing spending on diverse vendors on top of work that they already have. Um, in Massachusetts, we came in through a small business incubator pilot, uh, pilot uh, and you know the, the main goal was to make and streamline access to small and diverse businesses. Um, you know, from there we continued working with public entities in Massachusetts. Um, we worked with the Commonwealth uh, Operational Services Division and the Mass Gaming Commission to help them ensure uh, diverse vendor participation in the expanded gaming industry. Uh, of late, we've been working with the City of Albany um, on their municipal projects, mainly right now for the Water Department. Um, they're struggling with some of their, um, because of the intricacies in funding, some of their money is, is funded through state and federal grants, different goals, different responsibilities. Uh, with them, we help them identify these marketplaces, connect to these vendors, and then provide a, a fantastic bulletproof audit trail of all those efforts. Um, and what we find is that, uh, you know, through these efforts, uh, you start to understand what these marketplaces look like, and it informs your decision making on, on, on how to um, allocate uh, projects and, and what type of bid packages to put out. Um, in addition to the city of Albany, we've worked in the private sector with uh, Williams College. It's been ongoing work really since 2018 when we started piloting with them. Uh, but again, they have uh, a desire, not mandated by law, to be more inclusive in their contracting. And they'd like, you know, better representation uh, for the capital projects. You know, what businesses can we get in Western Mass? Can we pull businesses from Eastern New York State? Um, those sorts of questions. And we answer those questions with data. Um, our, our origins as a company started out of a technology uh, that was anchored in data mining. So again, these data inform these types of decisions. So we have a, a, a decent history. Um, what we do, it's really pretty basic. We identify, recruit, and engage the diverse and local vendors um, for inclusion in public procurement. Uh, we are able to do this in real time, meaning that it doesn't have to be done in advance of procurement. It can be done uh, a day before a procurement's published. We genuinely can do this real time. Um, we identify these marketplaces. We ensure that these vendors are made aware of the opportunities. And then another element that differs from just notifications from, um, say, New York State Contract Reporter or in Massachusetts, is it their, their contracting system is called Combi, is that we use real, real people to make these connections. Um, we find that real people uh, interact better, you get more information, uh, we create less noise, meaning we, we don't send blast emails out to everybody that could potentially participate. We're very um, specific and tactical in our efforts. Um, we document all these efforts. We do these detailed marketplace assessments, which will have a, a picture of you know, at least some of the data visualization stuff that we do later in the, in the slide deck. And we, we have this standardized, consistent um, process that we can put in place for every procurement so that any type of procurement manager or county executive could say, yes, this is the diverse vendor marketplace for this last procurement. Um, this is the outreaches. This is what the marketplace said to us. We got six more bids from diverse vendors. And from there, whether they choose 
you choose to select one or, or have to go with the lowest bid, that's that's on your shoulders at that point. But we provide that entire narrative of effort um, and how you are becoming more inclusive and how you're engaging these diverse vendors. We also have the ability to really target this. Um, if you have a need for hiring more minority vendors or more veteran vendors or any specific category, or you just want local, you know, if there's not a diverse vendor marketplace, well, you know, it'd be worth the effort to have a local person. Keeping these tax dollars local compounds those dollars and benefit communities, people, hiring, all the responsibilities that uh, public stewardship uh, requires. You know, helping to grow the, the businesses within your jurisdictions. And the positive impact is something that I, I can't overstate. Um, the local diverse vendor awareness has lasting impact, and I'll get into that later in the, in the slideshow. Uh, but the bottom line is it, it creates stronger participation, we generate more bids, it helps lower costs, creates better value, and it, it's a more effective means by which to uh, address inclusion requirements for each selected procurement. And I'll say one more thing on this, that in this COVID-19 environment that we have now, if you think about traditional methods that have been used to try and get diverse vendors into public jobs or even private sector jobs, we do a lot of open houses. We do a lot of cheese and crackers. We do a lot of these personal interaction type um, events that are really no longer feasible right now. And, and who knows how those will look down the road post COVID-19. Um, most of what we do is virtual, but it's with real people and it's with real contact and real communication. So uh, moving forward, the, the VeriCloud system is really good. Why does it work in the public sector? That's the question I probably get asked most. Um, it works because what we do is not a new technology that has to be purchased by a municipality and have to train employees and task people with operational work. We don't place any incremental demands on personnel. What we do is an overlay to the processes that, that are already in place, whether they're in New York State, Massachusetts, or any other state at the county level, the city level. What we've done has been specifically designed to work within existing programs, existing technologies, existing processes. Uh, what we found in our early engagements with municipal clients is that nobody wants a new procurement system. Nobody wants, you know, this thing turned upside down on their head. What they'd really like is more diverse vendors bidding on their procurement and more diverse vendors participating in the opportunities, whether it's within an agency, an authority, um, a county, or a city. And that's what we bring to the table. We, we, Streamline these, uh, through our process, your ongoing operations are streamlined, accelerated, and optimized. Um, and it works, it's the bottom line. It, it, it works, it, it, it's, it's no major impact on municipalities. It's no, no impact on people. Somebody doesn't say, oh, geez, I have to do that now. I have to, I have to find these people, I have to find these vendors. Do we have them in our municipality? I mean, and, and and it's no more that we try. Well, well, how did you try? Well, that varies from every jurisdiction. Some people are phenomenal at it. Some municipalities have people tasked with these jobs. Some don't have any program at all. But the bottom line is whatever procurement platform, whatever operational system is in place with any of these entities, private or public, um, our work is alongside, on top of, and supporting, and we provide a documented pipeline of, of vendors interested in participating. We also support them on their way. Next slide. <clears throat> and I'm gonna start giving you some examples. Now, there's, we're, we're gonna go through about four or five case studies here uh, of work we've done in different jurisdictions. Um, the first one we'll go over is, is a state procurement. Uh, this was really an interesting example uh, because it, it, it cases the magnitude of the impact that we have. 
Um, this was for a very small RFR through the Mass Gaming Commission, um, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It was something for travel services. Um, the previous time they put out this RFR, they had really one bidder, two, but when I looked into the second bidder, they, they seem to have gone out of business since then. So we took on this project. Um, it was one of the first ones I took on for the commission. I wanted to see what their current efforts were producing. So I waited till 48 hours before the procurement deadline to do this work. Um, what we were able to accomplish in that 48 hour period was the awareness. So we found out there was a marketplace of 12 diverse travel service companies. Um, and this is, again, all within this 48 hour period. Participation, we had nine of these companies going back and forth with us about the RFP, talking about it, providing us valuable feedback, whether or not they would bid. Granted, we gave them absolutely no time to put together a bid, 48 hours. They had to do it, you know, literally on the spot. When it finally came down to evaluating how many bids were submitted, we had four times the number of diverse vendors submit bids. So we had four diverse bidders from our efforts. Um, another really interesting element to this 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 process and this uh, this uh, case study was Combi's accounts. Now Combi's is the equivalent of um, contract reporter um, in New York State uh, at the county level. I, I can't speak for all the the different um, technologies or, or bidding platforms you might have, but we had five new accounts added because of our effort. And this is, again, within 48 hours of the procurement deadline. So five of these vendors created accounts and combines as first time bidders. Um, and then the winner, uh, again, really profound story. A WBE had been certified since 2009. I think we did this in 2017 or 18, um, end of 17, beginning of 18. So they were eight years um, without ever winning a public award, but certified for eight years in Massachusetts. We got them to submit their first bid, first ever contract in the Commonwealth, again, giving them 48 hours notice before the procurement deadline. Um, and then feedback. I can't understate the importance of the feedback, uh, especially um, at the municipal level. If you don't understand why these diverse vendor marketplaces are or are not participating in your procurement, you're unable to, to make necessary changes to be more inclusive. Um, and in essence, by not gathering the feedback, um, you're leaving a, a huge barrier in place to, um, to the diverse vendor participation. You, you may only get a trickle, uh, and, and there may be very simple things that need to be changes. Uh, need to be changed. A lot of the vendors that didn't bid on this procurement, we found out, didn't like the terms, the payment terms of the RFP. And they said, our industry, we like to be paid with a credit card, right? Then we put our fee on top of that and you pay it. What the commission wanted to do was be bid or, or be billed um, after each, each booking and pay for the whole thing. They didn't want to use a credit card. So uh, five of the nine decided not to submit bids. And again, maybe if they had more than 48 hours, we would have had more. But but this is a, just an interesting example of the magnitude of the impact um, that you can have. And, 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 and this is just one of many. Uh, next slide. So this is a private sector example. Um, this was some work we did uh, with Plain Ridge Park Casino uh, early on in the, the, I believe the casino was open at this point, but they had been falling behind with the Gaming Commission on, on meeting goals. Again, we identify, recruit, and engage the diverse vendors. Uh, this helps expand the contracting opportunities in this marketplace. They were specifically looking for veteran vendors. So this is an example of really dialing in our efforts to, uh, to have a desired impact. Uh, Plain Ridge Park Casino 
have said to the Gaming Commission, there are no veteran general contractors in Massachusetts. We haven't been able to find any. Uh, Gaming Commission came back to us and said, will you do a pilot with the Plain Ridge Park Casino? Show them what you can do for them. Like, absolutely. Uh, we did the marketplace analysis, all the data in the directory. Um, there were 20 uh, veteran general contractors in Massachusetts. So they, they didn't do a great job in the identification process. Um, so we continued on with our, our optimization process. Uh, as a result, after communicating with these 20 veteran general contractors about a I think it was about an $800,000 project to renovate the High, High Limits Gaming Lounge in the casino. We had 13 contractors submit requests for site visits and project documents. So here's an example where they went from zero to 13 people competing for the project. Um, and again, just a, a phenomenal positive impact from our efforts. Uh, next slide. And this is what a data visualization would look like. After we do our research work and our data work on the marketplace, we can pull up, put together pin drop maps of all the diverse vendors that we search for. In this case, it was just veterans. You know, we, we didn't go for women. We didn't go for minority. Um, in Massachusetts, they have multiple categories of minority, too. They have uh, Portuguese business enterprises. Uh, um, just it, it's it's a more <laughs> complicated um, marketplace than than New York State has. Um, so the data visualization helps, um, lets you know that there are vendors out there. Their proximity to a job site. Um, it's not a replacement for actually communicating with the marketplace, finding out who's willing to travel, who will do what. But it's part of the information gathering that we do to enable decision makers uh, at the municipal level to, is it worth our effort to try and get a contractor for this project that's diverse? The bottom line on this one is, yeah, absolutely. It's a no-brainer. You're gonna have you know seven of them or 10 of them competing for the, the job. You have 13 of them looking at, the, at documents and site visiting. Um, again, great example of the power of accessing data at the appropriate time. Um, and soliciting the information required to inform good decisions. Uh, next slide. So on to the informing of future decisions. Uh, this is a case study uh, where we really look at what a, what a marketplace looks like and what kind of information you can get from it. Um, this example was for um, promotional items, I believe. Um, and we did this RFR for the Gaming Commission. Um, again, I, I, I think they had used a diverse vendor in the past here. They had one that was submitting a bid, or, or they may have been contracting directly. I'm not positive on this example. But the marketplace was extensive when we did the work. There were 17 MBEs, 58 WBEs, four veteran or service to disabled veteran businesses, 16 disadvantaged. Three disability um, really was incredible. There were no Portuguese in this, and there were no LGBTQ in this. But this was the marketplace. This enabled mass gaming to say, hey, maybe it would be better if we actually bid this opportunity because there's a great marketplace. We can stretch our spending a little bit better than just going to our one go-to vendor that was diverse on this. So again, it enabled them to really figure out what they want to do in the future with this, this requirement. This is a great marketplace. We should utilize this marketplace. Again, more of the information that we can get to you at the county level to hate, help inform decision makings and help um, you initiate a program that lets you become more inclusive and continue to evolve your program and your processes. Uh, to open up more opportunities for the diverse and local vendors within your communities. Next slide. Capturing feedback. Um, again, cannot understate the, or over, excuse me, not overstate the importance of capturing vendor feedback. Um, as part of our optimization process, to me, this is one of the main elements 
um, the most bang for the buck in that this information is invaluable. This enables you to make decisions, change process, uh, right size opportunities. There, there are so many little things that can come out of this capturing feedback um, that can take a program that is marginal and make it immensely successful. Um, this is a great example of another um, another bit of feedback that we captured in real time optimizing an RFR. Uh, again, Massachusetts Gaming Commission, they were looking for uh, really research consultants. Uh, gaming research was the, the thing. Um, the marketplace was pretty robust for this. I think there were about 45 diverse firms um, that had this capability. Uh, but what was really interesting in our process is that some of the early feedback was from vendors saying, oh, this looks like a phenomenal opportunity. I wish I could only do a piece of it. And immediately the light bulbs went off for me. There's probably a good subcontracting marketplace here. There's probably a teaming marketplace here. Um, and I was really excited by it. So I, I went back to the, um, the commission leaders and said, hey, this RFR is a big RFR, but there's a bunch of people that I've heard in the early feedback. I shouldn't say it, it was probably three different vendors that mentioned it in the early feedback that were interested in doing a portion of this. Is it all right if I do another outreach and find out if there's interest in, in this diverse vendor marketplace for teaming or putting together proposals uh, with other vendors that can do a portion? And the short answer was yes, there was a huge interest. There were 11 diverse vendors that expressed an interest in teaming on this project. Um, the Gaming Commission implemented our recommendations in real time. I suggested that they take this, this teaming marketplace, post it to the RFR, so that even their um, non-diverse bidders, vendors that were interested in doing a portion of this project, and in essence, gave them a vehicle to hire or contract with these vendors to make their proposals um, more robust and more attractive to the commission. Um, it, it, this positive impact is tremendous. It, it, it had so many benefits. You know, one teaming marketplace, great idea on large RFRs. Um, we unlocked the opportunity for people that couldn't participate. We gave them a means by which to do a piece or to team with someone else and do a piece. Again, this extra inclusivity is not lost on these vendors and they're greatly appreciated, appreciative of the commission for unlocking this for them. Um, and, and the bottom line is it, it, is it informs the commission on what they can do with future large RFRs. Say part of the new process for us with them now is to identify potential teaming marketplaces on these RFRs uh, and get that information ready in advance so that prime contractors or non-diverse vendors have an opportunity to utilize these vendors. Now, I know a lot of this is mandated in New York State for large construction, and we push this responsibility off to our prime contractors and, and large contract awardees. Uh, but having the information in advance increases the number of bids you get. One, one uh, prime contractor that's, oh, I don't want to do the diversity work to find out about the diversity plan and diverse vendors. Uh, when, we, when we have this all laid out in advance, they can say, oh, I'll make a few phone calls. I'll see what we can do. Oh, fantastic. You know, we're, we're going to bid on this. Um, so this, again, this, this informed feedback enabled real-time implementation, real-time pages, and real-time in inclusivity and increases. Um, all these things open up new opportunities for diverse and local vendors, uh, and it makes you know county administrators heroes for saying, "Hey, we hear you, and this is what we're doing. We're going to we're going to try and change this to make it more inclusive and to get more participation." So again, the feedback piece phenomenal. Anytime you can capture this feedback, it's it's worth its weight in gold. Next slide. Okay, the NYSAC vision. Um, again, Steve laid this out flawlessly in the introduction. Um, again, I think the timing is is more important than ever now to try and 
engage these small diverse businesses from within your jurisdictions. Um, there are barriers. NYSAC recognizes the barriers, and I, and I applaud them for enabling me to uh, to speak today because one of the <laughs> one of the main elements of our mission is is to tear down these barriers, find out what they are, and create more pathways to diverse uh, diverse vendor participation and public opportunity. So <clears throat> again, you know, we can support the counties, we can support municipal government by identifying these marketplaces and activating them, um, providing the direct contact, the ability to include, engage, and support, and then also documenting these efforts. Uh, again, critically important to have and to understand the narrative of what the potential is within your diverse vendor communities within your jurisdictions. And then, of course, NYSAC recognizing the importance in facilitating the recovery in these businesses and communities impacted by COVID-19. Um, the social climate right now, the realities of business shutdowns for over two months, um, any efforts that are made uh, by leadership at the county level um, will absolutely be applauded from within these communities. It's, it's the best possible response to the social unrest. Um, it, it, it's very hard for municipal, municipalities to <clears throat> support, um, you know, a, a Black Lives Matter initiative without coming off as a little tone deaf and a little, um, a little self-serving. This type of initiative is, listen, we want to get jobs, business, as much of our contracting as we can to our diverse local vendors. We want to support these communities. We want to see them pull out of this post-COVID environment, and we want to see them thrive. Um, and, and again, Steve hit all the drivers. I'm not going to go into that again for you. Um, next slide. Okay. Here's a, just a simple outline of you know what what NYSAC has come to understand and how we might help. Uh, a lot of this is, is really an overview and a recap of what I've already said. But, uh, you know, NYSAC has a fundamental understanding. He, he laid it out flawlessly. Counties need to support and aid the recovery of communities and businesses negatively impacted by COVID-19. Um, at Veracloud, we can help. We have the tools and the programs to help counties um, address this and, and, and put forth an initiative to, to actually do something about it. Um, these recurring operational expenses and um, you know, spending at, at the community and county level on operational needs and, and supply chain. Um, these are things that we can easily look at and identify immediate opportunities for diverse and local uh, business participation. We cross-reference what you spend with the marketplaces that are available um, and come up with a, um, a landscape of where can we have positive impact right now. Uh, you may be limited by procurement um, laws and, and amounts for discretionary spending, but there are a lot of things um, within your power that can be done to enable this contracting directly. Uh, and again, counties need a, a effective, sustainable program. It, it, it's, you can't throw bags of rice at this program. You need something that's going to become self-sufficient, something that's going to um, continue to work, continue to grow, and continue to help these uh, communities and businesses. Um, and, and again, Steve uh, really hammered it home that keeping these dollars within these communities and local, it compounds. These, these, it supports supply chains, um, diverse hiring, um, everything. It's, it's, it's what needs to be done at this point. Um, and we have a, you know, basically two, two programs that we can do, a bear cloud procurement optimization, and a diversity works program where we work with prime contractors like we did with Plain Ridge Park uh, to connect them to these marketplaces. Um, again, it's very straightforward. It's no extra burden on personnel. Um, and the costs are minimal, generally pay for themselves by savings, uh, by increased participation in procurement. And the feedback piece. Counties need this vehicle. You, you need to hear what your vendors are saying. 
it's the only way to make improvements to be more inclusive. It's the only way that these programs can become successful and grow. Um, and, and one of our specialties since we were uh, came out of the data marketplace is creating these visualizations and, and abilities uh, for us to interact with these vendor marketplaces and provide that feedback um, that's necessary to explain, expand inclusion and, and drive um, these business engagements within these communities and these diverse vendors. Next slide. <clears throat> How can we make it work for you? So three really simple steps. Um, you know, we usually start with an audit for processes and supply chains to see how you're doing things. Um, then we take a look at your vendor marketplaces. We identify diverse and local vendor marketplaces. We cross-reference with the initial audit. Find the low-hanging fruit and the easy wins. You know, where can you make quick successes? Um, and then you can implement our other programs. Optimizing every procurement that a county does is a great way to engage those diverse and local businesses within that county. We ensure that on every procurement we go out, we identify these marketplaces, we activate these marketplaces, and we collect feedback uh, to inform you know, why people participate, why they don't, and it'll enable uh, each jurisdiction to find out wh what are the kinks in our armor, why why is our open procurement not including and attracting more diverse and local vendors? Uh, we answer those those questions, um, and again, it, it 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 helps you better leverage these resources that you have to get more bang for your buck and keep that bang within the areas uh, most negatively impacted. Uh, next slide. And again, I guess this is the thank you slide. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I appreciate the ability to, to to talk about what we do, where we've done it before, and how we can be helpful uh, at the municipal level. Um, we just want to help uh, municipalities streamline and accelerate their diversity performance. You know, our optimization and um, inclusion programs are really simple. They're again at the county to personnel. There's no impact. Um, these are low cost, uh, phenomenal ways uh, to leverage recurring spending, recurring opportunity um, to bring more dollars to these marginalized uh, areas, businesses, and those most negatively impacted by COVID. And again, thank you for your time. Um, love to answer questions if anybody has any, and I can't wait to stop talking. Thank you so much. Uh, Doug Rutnick, thank you very much. Uh, concise, right to the point. Uh, appreciate the time that you have given us today. Uh, more importantly, I appreciate the attendees who, who've uh, on a busy schedule uh, chosen to engage and at least listen uh, to this optimization program. Again, uh, a local government trying to do all it can uh, to help the community, uh, certain aspects of the community, but so to the community at large uh, using existing uh, procurement, uh, using existing resources, and trying to optimize, uh, engage uh, the minority uh, business community. And I'm uh, really grateful uh, for your time today, Doug. Look forward to doing more case studies in the state of New York and more work in the state of New York to show the value that this can bring. Just a couple of quick questions. Again, if you have a question, please submit it. Uh, on your dashboard, and we'll take them. Uh, I have a, just a, a question or two here, Doug, for you. Um, the question is, what exactly does a, quote, teaming marketplace, end quote, look like? Is this a list of firms with descriptions and contact information that is shared, or is this something you can demonstrate on a VeriCloud platform? So in the case of what we did in the Commonwealth, this teaming marketplace became a list that was added to the procurement. Um, a list of names, interested businesses, and the portion of the RFR they were interested in doing. Um, it was really just a product of direct feedback, um, you know, by, by engaging this marketplace. The only reason we 
found it is because we heard a couple people early on say, damn, this is a great opportunity. I wish I could just do a piece of it. Um, it didn't happen on its own. At that point, the commission said, hey, yeah, you can look into this. Why don't you outreach to these vendors and ask about a teaming marketplace? Um, we did that, found that it existed. Um, it's something that can be expanded upon, absolutely. Um, something that can be encouraged. Uh, you know, in advance of an RFR, we can talk to the marketplace and find out, you know, are those vendors interested in teaming with um, non-diverse primes as well as other diverse vendors? It's just a matter of accessing information at the appropriate time and then accumulating that information and leveraging it in, you know, for the best possible outcome. Again, none of this would happen without a um, program to solicit feedback. It just doesn't happen. Um, so we can do that. It, it's, it's not on anything proprietary. This just comes from work and interaction um, and understanding what it takes to communicate with this marketplace and, and what gets them to talk. Um, standardized outreaches don't do that. So um, a lot of the things we've developed over time, are, you know, are anchored in behavioral science and, and, and what works, what gets people talking, how do they, what makes them respond to an opportunity, you know? So thank you for that question. Okay, the next question that we have um, is uh, one county, and especially a rural one, uh, is, is way more granular granular than a state agency like Massachusetts Gaming. Do you, do you recommend a broader definition of local, like within so many miles uh, within New York State uh, or within a defined regional economic district council or anything else? Well, that really boils down onto the needs of each, each client or customer. Um, it would be ideal if there are no diverse vendors in your community or in your jurisdiction, or there's one or two, to focus efforts on recruiting the local businesses. It's a whole nother data set, a whole nother um, marketplace that needs to be uh, identified, activated, and included in these procurements. Uh, it doesn't happen accidentally, but when you, when you actually do the work, find out what these marketplaces are, um, how big, of a net do you want to cast 50 miles uh, from the county do you want to do it by zip codes do you want to do it by radius um, or do you just want to diversify because there may be diverse vendors that aren't proximal to you that may want to do the work but again it's all um, marketplace analysis work uh, and you know it, it needs to be done so you have answers if, if no diverse vendors want to participate well then I'd be focusing my efforts on trying to find some local to try and keep those dollars within your community as opposed to uh, a larger contractor that, you know, may be the easier choice. Um, but if you don't start exploring these marketplaces, nothing changes. And, and what we've found is that, uh, you know, as you, as you try and shape spending with intent and purpose, you can really make things happen. Okay, uh, Doug, the next question is, how does uh, this um, uh, system, um, uh, well, there's a response back to your question here. Thanks for answering the teaming question that's very valuable uh, as a way to support connection and collaboration between vendors. And this individual sincerely appreciate your response to that, and that can generate teaming approaches unrelated to an RFR. So. Uh, I guess a, a large thank you to answering that question on the teaming question, Doug. Next question is, uh, how does the system that the Veracloud system integrate, use, expand upon, understand the state MBWE lists and systems that are in place in computer systems at the state level right now? That's a great question. You know, um, we actually just use the data from the state systems or the data from a county or uh, any jurisdiction that may have their own um, list or their own directory. Um, what we found, and again, this, I hope it's not too, doesn't go too far in the weeds for you, but we found that there's a lot of inconsistencies in how vendors 
report themselves or list themselves in directories. They don't always have every capability listed. They sometimes don't use all the proper codes. Um, many times there's not a robust description of the goods or services they provide. Um, what we found is that by doing our own data searches through the raw data and not using the, the technology that um, ESD has to access vendors, um, we get better data sets. We get better um, lists, for lack of a better word, better, better um, feedback, outcomes, and results from our searches. Um, New York's data is in pretty good shape. Massachusetts data is, is kind of a train wreck a little bit. Um, but we found that if we search across multiple fields, um, especially for description of, of work, even the, even the name, um, which isn't always, you know, J&W plumbing, but they don't put a good robust description of what they do. Maybe they do, um, you know, uh, big sewer municipal work. Maybe they do, you know, sinks, hook up washing machines. Without a description, you have no idea. Um, our work, you know, we'll go right, right in, look at the website, find out, you know, what they say they do. Um, and that's how we build these marketplaces. That's how we identify them. Um, but we don't rely on anyone's search engines but our own, but we utilize the raw data uh, in directories um, from all over the state. So uh, if there's a, if you have your own directory for MWBEs, we'll utilize that. Um, you know, we'll overlay it with the state. There's all kinds of audits we can do, find out are there any other diverse vendors that aren't part of your uh, data set within the municipality that, you know, would be beneficial to, uh, to have them get certified with the county. Um, these are things that we've come across with the city of Albany in our work that we're, we're working on. Um, and again, maybe some of these regulations might be, might be ripe to be adjusted. Um, is there a benefit to having the county directory? I mean, can we just use state certification? Um, it all depends on, you know, how inclusive or, or what, um, what the reasons are for these, these separate directories. But we, we use, all the available data um, and then for diverse or non-diverse local vendors we use a bunch of different databases that are collected from you know public documents tax returns licensing you know whatnot so um, when you're looking for you know locals it's a whole bigger data set a uh, little more complex the diverse vendors in new york are pretty well delineated um, their data is, is collected and it's easy to work with so uh, I hope that question um, or that answer answers your question. Okay. Uh, the last question we have, we're coming up on the hour here, is the cost of the program. Uh, how does it work? How is it procured? Uh, is there a way that we could sort of aggregate it? I know that NISAC uh, is trying to work with counties on this to figure out a way to, if more counties came in jointly together, could we generate some cost savings um, to uh, implement here to uh, drive the program, uh, drive the program cost? So, uh, so the cost of working with Veracloud, that's the question. Yeah, so that varies depending on the amount of, uh, of intervention and work that you, you want us to do. I mean, these audits are pretty basic. They're, they're not, uh, you know, exorbitantly expensive most of them would probably go into in under discretionary spending uh, most of the work we're doing with the city of albany is in under their discretionary discretionary spending or under professional services um, the optimizations that we do um, the more we do the better price we can get on them right now there's a a flat rate to optimize the procurement um, you know, and it's whether you want it optimized for diverse, diverse and or local feedback, all of that. Um, but as as we aggregate work, it, it lets us bring our costs down. So if you wanted to try a handful of procurements, we do them at fifteen hundred bucks a piece. Um, but it's it, it's not in stone. This pricing, this 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 pricing can come down based on commitments. Um, from municipalities. If we're going to do all your procurements, well then 
we can get this price down under the cost of a, a full-time employee, maybe close to a part-time employee. Uh, but it's, you know, we have to know that the, the work is steady because then we can make adjustments internally and, and deliver these uh, services. But we're, we're willing to work. And I know Steve has been working hard at, uh, at establishing a vehicle uh, that can be used by, by multiple counties to procure our services. Okay, so the suggestion might be to, uh, 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 how do they get a hold of you, Doug? Uh, how, how do you suggest folks contact you? Is that if you? Okay, well, my contact information is right there on the last slide. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure this is going to be recorded. I, I um, Also, you know, that information you can have at NYSAC if they want to call you and say, hey, how do I get hold of that Veracloud guy? Okay. Uh, they talk too much in Albany. <laughs> Okay, so, very good. Yeah, I, I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to speak with anyone. It's it's what we do. It's a passion. Um, I love making headway for for municipal clients and seeing the you know seeing the differences happen when their eyes light up and all of a sudden wow we just unlocked this for more participation. These are going to be more dollars within our community. Um, it's important work and and, and I enjoy it and. Uh, love to discuss it with anyone okay uh that will uh take us right up to the hour uh, time here i'm grateful uh for your participation doug and those of you that were able to join us today again we will be archiving this posting it on the nysac website uh very appreciative of uh engaging uh, how diversity can work for you uh, using the existing resources that we have optimizing uh procurement for minority for veterans for minority and for women-owned businesses. Doug Rutnick, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Steve, and thank you everyone for, uh, for signing up.